Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Ooh, I did not update the scoreboard. Uh, there is going to be a little bit of a black screen for you guys here while I do that. So Radley took game one. Bit of a spoiler there if you didn't see it. There's that black screen that pops up. Sorry about that. Bottom left-hand corner, we got Radley starting as the purple Terran. Bottom right-hand corner, we got Zazu starting as the white Zerg. This is going to be on retro, I believe. Yeah, retro. And we've seen Radley time and time again open up with that two... Uh, so the two barracks, no expansion, just straight early marine pressure. And the Zerg, because they've become so accustomed to one racks or two racks into expansion, have not properly been responding to it. And we'll see if Zazu has an adjustment this match. And really what it's come down to is, is they've really neglected the Zergling Scout to... In particular, the Zergling Scout at the natural expansion to observe the size of the marine count and that's uh, an important part of zerg play is being able to keep an eye on your opponent's numbers so that you can respond with proper larva counts in time zazu taking overlord to the upright in corner unfortunately it's not going to end up with first scout it's very similar positions and it's looking identical to game one thus far so this could be an, an advance for radley we are seeing the extractor trick right now from zazu which suggests he might be going for overpool or some sort of build along those lines, or maybe he was just wanting to go for... Interesting. I wonder, he just wanted to sneak an extra larva. I haven't seen that in quite some time. Um, and if I recall, I don't remember it being all that economically efficient. He's still staging up for an 11 hatchery. So moving to go ahead and drop that now. He's going for cross-positional scout with his drone. So he's definitely dedicating a scout this time. So will be more successful in that regard. So dropping that hatchery at the natural, we are seeing the double racks play once again for Radley. So it looks like he wants to pour on similar aggression that he has in the, the previous matches, and it is going to be up to Zazu to properly respond. Overlord, I believe the Overlord has a better flight path overall to get over that natural expansion, but at least, so we got a drone making the way. I do believe there's going to be a marine blockading, but at the very least, Zazu should have a for, uh, some forewarning this time. We have the spawning pool behind us. We have a later gas than previous though. So previously we saw a, I think it was about like a 210, 215 gas. And this is turning into a much, much later gas from Zazu. A few additional drones being pumped, it looks like. And I'm wondering if he's gonna go, try to go quick third hatchery in response to this, or maybe he's just still a little bit shaken from game one. So taking a little bit of damage, the drone able to get through though, and spot the two hatchery openers. So he's not gonna be fooled by anything at this stage. That dr drone most certainly going to perish though. Unless it, nope, not quite able to. Refinery dropping, and it's gonna be an in-base third hatchery before gas. So we are looking at old school three hatch play from Zazu here. Very going way back to to oh, some old school builds here. Dropping an extractor, saying, "Okay, you're going to play off tempo. I'm going to play off tempo as well." So the Marines starting to group up. Zazu not going to build already building a creep colony defensively, out of respect of potential off timing push. This this time we got three SCV on gas, so we could see a transition potentially into mech. The two Zerglings are making their way forward, and let's see if Zazu does a better job this time of keeping it. I mean, the Overlord needs really to take a northerly path. This could be dangerous, actually, if the Overlord gets too deep. That could be a dead Overlord very, very quickly. Uh, needs to be careful. The Zerglings both getting taken out, but they do manage to at least spot the early numbers. There's a Sunken Colony right there. there these, I believe, six Marines kills a Sunken Colony, but with drone support, should be able to defend. Let's see if there's some additional Zerglings that are produced uh, behind this. No Zergling speed upgraded as of yet. The Overlord going, honestly, this is too deep for Zazu. And yeah, the Marines are going to, in fact, go after that. This could be really, really punishing for Zazu right here. And this could be a quick second game win for Radley overall. The SCV wandering a little bit too far in. We have a tech to layer. Sees the third hatchery. The Marines a little bit spread out. They need to, these two Marines going absolutely, I don't know where they're going. But right now, Zazu's lost an early game Overlord and is in the red. And starting to fall apart a little bit. So additional Overlord in construction. The worker count's actually even. Uh, Radley, I'm not sure why he didn't want to jump and dive on top of that, especially after that Overlord kill. He probably could have won the game right there. Second gas getting dropped from Zazu to go ahead, and that will allow him a lot of rapid gas in between here. Usually, we'll see if this transitions into three hatch mutilists. Quite often does. And we're seeing a interesting transition to... Is this? I'm not sure whether this is going to be some pseudo-1-1-1 thing. 
if this is just going to be pure, it looks like it's going to be pseudo one 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 because we have a machine shop getting dropped behind this. And Radley is, after that Overlord kill, staging up to go ahead and grab his natural expansion. So this is an interesting transition. So bulk of Marines pr produced at the start. The Marines have been cut altogether. Some tech has been pushed. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if a science vessel is also tacked on behind this. And a second sunk colony dropped. Worker count's actually even, which puts Zazu in a pretty good spot, especially uh, with that second base not yet up in construction. But it'll be interesting as things transition. And yeah, just going to go straight to science facility. And this could play very well for Radley overall. If he gets that science, if he gets that science facility up, gets a radiated research, it really could cut into any addition, uh, any initial game punishing mutilus play. Although what could be happening here is the Spire potentially for show and actually mid game Lurker instead, Lurker Ling, uh, to throw Radley off guard. So it looks like Zazu may be wanting to throw out some tricks as well. One problem with going this quick leap to science vessels is that is going to slow down plus one weapons enormously. And what that means is, is early game Zerglings and Lurkers are going to be somewhat stronger in the initial stages of the game. And it looks like Lurker tech is in fact being researched. So I have a feeling, yeah, the Spire is primarily for show right this second. And it is in fact going to be a Lurker Ling combination to start. With the science vessel out in play, it'll help against that. but. Again, without that plus one weapons, and I'm curious where that comps had landed and if it saw uh, the Lurker done overall. We, and we just see, yeah, look at that. Immediately upon that, we see a whole bunch of turrets being constructed, expecting Mutalus play. The Zerglings testing the front, one of them losing their lives for it, but otherwise defending back. We have a drone pocketed in that top right hand corner. Unfortunately for Zazu, part of the strategy of this is later science vessel play. And because there was that skip in mid-game tech and a delay of plus one in range, the science vessel is actually going to be out a little bit earlier. I don't know that that's going to provide, especially if uh, sufficient lurkers. Oh, we do have mutalisks on the field. Ignore what I was saying. So we are still seeing the, the mutalisks, although it's just four in number. I'm looking to see. I don't see the fifth out in the field, but we do have lurkers out in play as well. And if they're out in sufficient numbers and grouped up well enough, you can have some pretty strong positional play. So the Mutalists are actually showing themselves. They're going to see the science facility in Starport. Looks like they might, but yeah, not quite going to get an SCV. I, I, I believe it's five Mutalists gets the two shot on the SCV. So just going to take massive damage and pull back out. I didn't think there were going to be Mutalists at all, honestly, with this initial play. We do have a Hydralisk in the top right, potentially to create a Lurker Egg to help defend that top right base. That will be a third gas in place double evolution chamber getting dropped behind this and it looks like this is going to be a transition to mech for zazu so he's dropped double armory as well so he's got that initial interesting so he's got that initial science vessel out this is going to cut and he's just been you can see the supply count differential and uh ooh, zazu also supply blocked himself right here rough game for both these guys both players supply capped right this second but i think the lurkers in the top right getting that three Three gas out in play. Hold position lurkers just kind of out in the field right now. It looks like hydralisks being upgraded. So it looks like this is going to transition into potentially late game defiler uh, plague. So defiler ling, uh, defiler hydra play. Uh, unfortunately, I'm that's usually in anticipation of medic marine, not in anticipation of the transition to mech that we're seeing right here right now it's still a light factory count though so we're just seeing one tank being produced so we got very light production and honestly i'm a little bit disappointed maybe because of the the supply box maybe because of losing that over that earlier overlord but radley has ended up with a he's still 20 supply ahead but he could be a lot more supply ahead if he had just kept up with kind of the standard m m medic production more comp sats dropped so we got four hatcheries to work with for Zazu. He has three gas capped. Looks like, and he's still not making any motions to go towards uh, Hive Tech, as far as I can tell, pocketing some lurkers to the north. So he's just got hold position lurkers around the map. And I don't know that he's anticipate. I absolutely do not think he's anticipated this mech switch. The mech switch is very, very slow. Radley's in a pretty comfortable economic position. However, this third base is starting to saturate pretty well, which keeps Zazu relevant. And if he grabs a fourth, particularly if he hides it at the nine o'clock location, I don't think Radley, I don't know that Radley would ever think to scout this. It would be a very rare base to take. The Mutal is starting to 
move forward once again. You would expect Medic Marines out on the map, so I think he's a little bit confused as to why he's not experiencing additional pressure. Plus one weapons and armor on the way. We've got two siege tanks and some Medic Marines starting to move forward. There is a science vessel alongside. And now the question is, is this just a victory on sheer volume? So deduct 20 supply from here. And you can see that it's still a, a sizable supply lead for Radley. The Mutalists sweeping in in between. They see the siege tanks. They see the science vessels. And the lurkers are spread out all over the place. This could... Okay, we got whole position lurkers mid-map. All Radley has to do is be d disciplined with this. And he should be okay. But if he just runs headlong into this lurker line, it could be disaster as well. Okay, it looks like they weren't even hold position lurkers. So they should be able to clean this up without too much trouble. Medic actually dies in the midst of that. There's a little bit more damage than Radley should should have taken, honestly. The Zerglings and Lurkers regrouping. Some Hydralisks looking to sneak out of position around to the south. So want to go for a pincer maneuver on Radley's troops. Radley grouping up, keeping the siege tanks to the south. Stimming forward. Science vessels are well protected. Very odd games, I'll have to say. Now Zazu's starting to step on the gas as far as unit production. Plus one weapons is there for the Hydralis, but plus one armor is not. But keep in mind, these Marines do not have plus one weapons as well. And the Siege Tanks are just now going to hit plus one weapons, plus one armor. I'm not sure how much of that... I, I actually do not know the, the hit mechanics as far as how much that makes more beneficial. So now we're seeing the Pincer from both ends. I think Zazu has enough to encapsulate this. The science, one science vessel down. I think that si second science vessel actually drops in a radi to try to take care of a scourge to just get out of this. And that attack completely obliterated. Bradley has managed to keep up supply behind this, starting to move out and drop some spider mines in the meantime. But actually, Hydra support, Hydras with overlords that have speed do pretty well at mine sweeping. It is just a matter of having that defiler support after this. And right now, Zazu, again, down supply. And eventually, Mech does outscale, like, generally, Medic Marine outscales pure Hydralisk. But Siege Tank, I believe Mech outscales Hydralisk, uh, Hydralurk as well. Uh, but it does require some degree of control. We got some mines here out in the forward field. And again, it's kind of one of those games where you, you need to just send Zerglings to sweep this, or you need that the Overlord Hydralisk to kind of clear those mines ahead of the Lurkers. Otherwise, the Lurkers really can't proceed. The one problem for Terran going mech like this with Lurkers out in the field is you do end up with, you have to rely on Comsat. We have a Valkyrie on top of this. We're really anticipating a, a mech switch potentially to Hydralisk. That's just not happening. Zazu moving some drones, or I think this is just must be a miss rally. Starting to resaturate top right. He's well behind. So Radley has 60 workers. But he doesn't have that command center up at the 9 o'clock. And it is going to be important that he gets that up and established. These lurkers able to skirt by. One of them able to skirt by the lines. It looks like another lurker at least getting taken out. And the vultures in sufficient numbers to peck away at the lurker lines. But Radley in a pretty good position here. He does need to stop a fourth gas going up. Because when, you're, when you've got four gas zerg... A lot can happen. Radley, I don't know if he recognizes that he has uh, such a significant supply lead right this second. We have a big lurker field to the south just to try to catch those vultures if they're running their way through. There's still some pathways. It looks like the lurker's providing some scouting to the north. Hydralisks engage pretty well against the vultures overall. And keep in mind those upgrades are going to be pretty decent. Yeah, we got plus one weapons, plus one armor already in between. The Valkyries, the science vessel, scooting out to the south. This is clever from Radley. He's going to go ahead and irradiate the double Valkyrie to try to utilize it as a suit and trying to dodge the Scourge so he can get on top of the lines. There are Hydralists there to engage it. The Scourge not quite able to land. Hydralists dashing to try to get to the main. You can see they're just eating a lot of that damage. So they at least get there and they're able to kill a few drones and then get it wiped out otherwise. I think the main problem for Radley right this second... Okay, now I missed this. The Vulture's able to run by and get into the drone lines top right as well. So at least he knows that hatchery's being built top right. Additional drones getting wiped out. And so Zazu, starting to... Usually he'd want to be stabilizing at a heavy drone count right this second towards the late game. Instead, struggling around the 30 count. Grabbing another hatchery at the 3 o'clock location. Some lurkers have managed to sneak to the 9 o'clock. Kill that SCV. So that's going to delay that 9 o'clock. And that actually could be problemsome for Radley. Because Mech, unlike Medic Marine, is expensive. And you have to maintain it. He's got a whole lot of factories out. 
but you can see where the main is starting to look very, very thin. More Idol is starting to push in, wanting to try to catch the Siege of Mind Drag into one of the Siege Tanks. A nice defense matrix underneath this, but that Siege Tank still impotent at close range. A nice Irradiate, and unfortunately, uh, okay, finally that Idol is actually separated, but this is again going to delay this 9 o'clock base, and Radley needs this base up. A nice drop comps at right there to continue with that punishment. We have a single... I thought there might be another unit up there. That command center is actually looking very, very weak, actually. In fact, it's going to be built burning and in need of instant repair. We have another command center at the 6 o'clock, just floating, waiting to take that. A bunch of Scourge making their way that direction, though. Might be able to take that command center out. Not going to be able to put it in the red. Looks like uh, most of the Scourge, but Radley's still way ahead in supply. He's 40 supply up, and that's not just 40 supply of anything. It's 40 supply of mech. Zazu is getting some queens out to try to deal with this. Usually you want some sunken colonies or some other cruft in the north to help defend this, but right now it's just lurkers and hydralists to try to press back the vultures. Looks like those mines are going to, in fact, get cleared, and that was a nice draw. It's exactly what you need to do. The 3 o'clock location has been discovered. Unfortunately, for vultures, it takes forever to kill these bases, so I think the hydralists are going to be able to get in position without too much trouble to defend this. And again, just this grouping of hydralists should be plenty to go ahead and repel these uh, vultures. They're going to get a drone kill? Looks like not. Zazu slowly increasing that worker count. The problem for Radley right now is he really needs to take an additional base on top of this, preferably to the top right. It looks like he has another command center built, but hasn't fielded it as of yet. And he needs to, with mech, it's just so expensive, that one bad engagement here, if he ends up losing his uh, bulwark of siege tanks out in the field, because that's kind of the game here, is you're just building a bunch of siege tanks to where you have uh, an impenetrable wall versus anything that Zerg can throw out. Vultures diving into the top right. Several of them dying, but it looks like they are in fact going to get on the drone lines. But right now, I don't see Radley grabbing additional bases. He's done a great job of, inter of trying to slow Zazu down, though. Zazu hasn't grabbed that fourth gas critically. He hasn't grabbed the fifth gas as well. And he looks like he has made his way to Hive. He's going for Greater Spire in response ahead of Defiler, noticing potentially a lack of Goliaths. And honestly, I do not like Greater Spire on this map. There's just too much open field in the middle of the map for Guardians to be effective. We have a Parasite dropped. Not sure which unit it got dropped on. Maybe it got dropped on a Vulture. Plus two weapons out, plus three weapons on the way. That upper left-hand base is being dispatched, and that is actually disastrous for Radley. So now he's on two bases. He still has a massive supply lead, but he's not getting aggressive with it. And Zazu has a lot of bases, and his numbers are steadily increasing. So maybe he can punch through with one of these, uh, with uh, a big siege tank grouping. He is going to probably max well before Zazu does, and he's going to have that plus three weapons, a very, very powerful mech army to work with. But Zazu, if he can just get... Uh, now he's at a, a sizable drone count. If he can just start stepping on the gas and start getting those upgrades, get some defilers out in play, I don't know what he's going to do with this Greater Spire. Looks like he does have some mutalists to potentially build right there. Some more vultures flooding in here to the 3 o'clock base, getting some additional drones. I'm concerned that Radley's concentrating too much on these vulture runbys to whittle the drone counts, which gives a nice drone round, but he's not doing enough to secure additional bases for himself. Treating this as though it was a standard a standard medic and marine army. His natural expansion is almost gone, which means he has to get it done with the... There's the parasite. With the siege tank army. So starting to move out now, he's got a sizable supply advantage over his opponent. I don't know that Zazu has enough to defend this, but he does need to win it with this latent army, unless in the midst of this, he can go ahead and cap an additional attack force someplace. A bunch of guardians being morphed right this second to try to repel this. A command center is floating the six o'clock. That'll be huge for Radley if he can cap that. But we have some guardians morphing and how many? Looks like we got four Goliaths. One problem with the guardians is I, yeah, I don't like the, again, at mid map, if Goliaths managed to get out there, there's just a lot of space for them to get hunted down. Hydral is currently clearing mines mid map. We still have some queens that have a decent amount of energy to potentially punish this. This is a significant amount of Guardians. The Guardians have just been spotted. That should allow Radley to go ahead and flood a Goliath count to counteract this. It looks like he's building Valkyries to try to create a counter. We have an Irradiate dropped, a couple spawn Broodlings in the midst of this, it looks like. The Queen's just hanging out in the meantime. So we got, this is turning into an interesting macro match. So we got five Gas Zerg, 
at this stage, a bunch of hatcheries, but down a significant amount of supply with greater spire. A Valkyrie waiting in the wings. I don't see any Scourge to help defend this. And all sorts of Guardians. This looks like a campaign mission right now, is what this looks like. So moving in a single Radiate drop, that one Valkyrie's got a lot of work to do. The Hydralisks could move, sweep in once the Siege Tanks are cleared out. Unfortunately for the Guardians, if they're bunched up, they do take that splash damage. It looks like they're working on the Goliaths right this second. Yeah, and they're getting wiped out in mass. The Hydra is still holding in position. I don't see any additional Scourge. Looks like they're just being built. And several of these Guardians getting wiped out in the meantime. More Radiate being dropped. Actually, an Eraser trick might be more valuable here. Drop the Irradiate on the Science Vessels and have them wipe over that Guardian line. But it looks like there is a lot of disruption on what's left here. The Guardians are, in fact, getting cleaned up. And this is allowing Radley to cap the six o'clock base, although all of a sudden his worker count is looking dangerously close to Zazu's, and again, the supply count is also looking dangerously close. The Valkyrie pocketed at the six o'clock, the science vessels are now gone, and remember what I said earlier about the problem of losing that latent army and then not having sufficient bases to rebuild it. Mech build, rebuilds very, very slowly, and it's very, very expensive to rebuild, so this gives Zazu the advantage being that it's Mech and in close proximity. So now Zazu's starting to overwhelm his opponent with just moving in now that the siege tank count is smaller first of all and also not sieged up and Radley gonna GG right there recognizing that he doesn't have the resources to continue into late game play well played from Z I'm not sure if I want to say well played from Zazu as much as uh, Radley not doing what he needed to do to close that one out but we're gonna move to a final game in this series hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for listening